Prophecy Bites. This new concept I'm working on for showing and revealing of prophecy bite by bite worldwide and bringing spiritual food into your life. I will send out these little short yet possible prophecy illusions coming out of today's news and events. These little things we see today that may be matches to end time prophecy, yet maybe not. Prophecy by number two, the Laodicean Church, Revolution, Revelation 3, 14 through 22. <clears throat> And unto the angel, angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And because you saith, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that you mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke, be jealous therefore, and repent. Behind I, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So to him that overcome, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, so we don't get mixed up here, I'm going to say that the, the, the Laodicean church was a real church as well as the last church mentioned in Revelation. Many believe that the last church on earth will be just like the Laodicean church. And I am in agreement with that. Furthermore, I see the common church now much as the Laodicean church from Revelation. If faith in God through Christ is worth anything, it is worth everything. And any indifference is excusable they say that, you know, they are neither hot nor cold. Boy, I'm telling you what, you know, in the, in the seminaries and the Bible colleges of today, many of the priests and pastors are trained with more time spent learning how to dispel religious thought than how to, def how to defend and support it. And this is above and beyond the act of keeping and entrapping believers for support and slavery. And after many years of such progression within the halls of academia, it is now deeply entrenched in the church. I think that Jesus would and will spew them out of his mouth like lukewarm water, not fit to drink, just as said in Revelation. They believe that they are rich, yet they are very poor. They fund large buildings and citadels to show all who are about them just how rich they are. Come, see, see how rich we are. They collect large benevolency funds 
yet handing them over the richness of believers to secular organizations to dispense them. Thereby they rob Christ and give away the chance of evangelism. They do not want, they do not want to deal with the, the unwashed, the poor, and the crippled folks that are in need of that benevolence, love, and caring counsel. And so these churches are naked, and everyone knows their, their nakedness. Everyone knows their blindness. They are far worse off than the people who know they need benevolence. They speak the words and they hear the echoes, but they have forgotten how to walk. Yet still Christ calls them until it's too late. And Christ speaks to the believers even inside those churches until it's too late. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, he said. So be zealous, therefore, and repent. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. As stated many times, I believe it's seven times right here, in Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3. Because it is each and every person that is responsible for his own soul before God. And thereby each and every believer can learn and emulate Christ within the faith and the power granted unto him by Christ. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. Have you opened that door yet? Are you ready for the greatest life you can ever know? A life found in Christ. He's right there waiting for you. Please come to know him. Please come to love him and be loved by him. And allow the Holy Ghost to prepare you, to cleanse you, and to dress you for the wedding at the end of time. I say that in the end of times because there is much yet beyond anything that we know about the future time. See you at the wedding.